Welcome. In this video, we're going to dive into database buffer management. Buffer management is all about efficiently handling how data moves between your computer's disk storage, where information is permanently stored, and the main memory, where the database actively works with the data. This process ensures that frequently used data is quickly accessible, which is crucial for speeding up database operations. So what exactly is buffer management? At its core, buffer management minimizes disk input and output operations, or I.O. Disk I.O. refers to reading data from and writing data to the physical disk, which is a relatively slow process. It manages the transfer of data between the disk and main memory, acting as a middleman to reduce the number of times the database needs to access the slower disk. Buffer management uses buffer pools. Think of these as caches that store frequently accessed data in memory, making it readily available. It also implements replacement policies, which are strategies to decide which data to keep in memory and which to remove when space is limited. All of this is critical for ensuring the database runs efficiently. Let's take a look at the structure of a buffer pool. The buffer pool is essentially a collection of buffer frames within the main memory. You can see in the diagram that the buffer pool is made up of multiple frames. Each frame can hold a page of data, read from the disk storage. A frame can be in one of three states, free, used, or dirty. A free frame is available and ready to store new data. A used frame contains valid data that matches what's on the disk. A dirty frame holds data that has been modified, but not yet written back to the disk. The buffer manager keeps track of which frames are in which state and manages requests to load and access data pages. The buffer manager is responsible for efficiently organizing and managing these frames, deciding when to bring in new data from the disk and when to write modified data back to the disk. Let's look at a simplified version of how a buffer manager might work. When an application needs a specific page of data, it requests it from the buffer pool. The buffer manager first checks if that page is already in the buffer pool. If it is, the buffer manager simply returns the frame containing that page. If the page isn't in the pool, the buffer manager needs to find a free frame to load the page into. If there are no free frames, it has to choose a victim frame to replace using a replacement policy which we will discuss later. Finally, the buffer manager loads the requested page from the disk into the chosen frame and returns that frame. To summarize, the application requests a page. The buffer manager checks if the page is in the buffer pool. If not, it finds an available frame. If there are no free frames, it selects a victim using a replacement policy. And finally, it loads the requested page from disk into the frame. When the buffer pool is full and a new page needs to be brought in, the buffer manager must decide which existing page to replace. That's where replacement policies come in. There are several common replacement policies. The least recently used, or LRU, policy replaces the page that hasn't been accessed for the longest time. The first in first out, or FIFO, policy replaces the page that has been in memory for the longest duration, regardless of how recently it was used. The least frequently used, or LFU, policy replaces the page with the lowest access count. Finally, the clock algorithm approximates LRU, but with lower overhead, using a circular buffer and a reference bit. To see a visualization, let's look at the LRU queue. When a new page is requested and no free frames are available, the page at the end of the LRU queue will be replaced. Let's take a closer look at the clock replacement algorithm. The clock algorithm uses a circular buffer, like a clock face, with each frame having a reference bit. When a page needs to be replaced, the clock hand advances, checking the reference bit of each frame. If the reference bit is zero, meaning the page hasn't been recently used, it's selected as the victim. If the reference bit is one, it's set to zero, and the clock hand continues to advance. So the clock algorithm finds a victim by advancing the clock hand. If the reference bit is zero, it returns the current frame. Otherwise, it resets the reference bit to zero, and it continues this process until a suitable victim is found. 
Let's look at some key buffer management techniques. Buffer pinning prevents critical pages from being replaced during operations. Some pages, such as index routes or system tables, are crucial for database operations, so they should not be evicted from the buffer pool. Pinned pages are excluded from replacement algorithms and remain in memory until they are explicitly unpinned. Another technique is dirty page management, which efficiently handles modified pages to ensure data consistency. When a page is modified in memory, it is marked as dirty. Dirty pages must be written to disk before replacement. Write operations can be batched for better performance. Let's look at the steps. A page is modified in memory and marked as dirty, then it will be written to disk when needed. Now, let's discuss recovery and optimization in buffer management. Recovery refers to handling system failures while maintaining data integrity. To achieve this, we can use write-ahead logging, or WAL, which means logging changes before modifying buffer pages. We can also use checkpointing, which involves periodically flushing dirty pages to disk, creating a consistent snapshot of the database. The third step is the recovery process, which means restoring a consistent state using logs after a failure. Now let's move on to performance optimization. Techniques to improve buffer management efficiency include prefetching, which means loading anticipated pages before they are requested. There is also buffer pool sizing, which is about allocating optimal memory based on workload. We also have write coalescing, where we batch multiple writes to reduce input and output operations. And lastly, there's scan resistance to prevent sequential scans from flushing the buffer pool. So let's summarize what we have learned. Buffer management minimizes disk input and output by caching frequently accessed data in memory. Replacement policies such as LRU, FIFO, and clock algorithms optimize memory usage. Buffer techniques like pinning and dirty page management ensure data consistency. And efficient buffer management is critical for database performance. To learn more about this topic, I recommend resources such as books like Database System Concepts by Silbershots, Korth, and Sudarshan. Also check out research papers like The Design of the Postgres Storage System. You can also explore open source implementations like PostgreSQL and MySQL Buffer Manager implementations. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.